Thank you for joining Mondo Agora on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Today I'll be reviewing the film Hitler, the greatest story never told. Um, I think it's a film that you should check out. I think there's multiple conclusions. So if you don't, uh, don't finish the review or the my little talk, definitely look into it, even if you don't think you would like it. Because you could definitely learn a lot of stuff from it. But um, it's definitely a one-sided affair. Anyway, check it out, and, and I'll talk to you guys. Alright, I'm going to start today by doing three different quotes from the late, great Terrence McKenna. Definitely one of my intellectual idols. Really like the guy. Um, you shouldn't believe everything he says, but you shouldn't believe what anybody says completely he would just kind of talk and sometimes you would just get some great great bits he went out there you know anyway um this this podcast is also going to be kind of a film critique and a cultural critique and a little bit of a criticism of other podcasts podcasts that i'd actually say are much better than my own. I really enjoy these two podcasts. They're done by like the same group of people. It's a place called Red Ice Creations. I think it's a Swedish company. Um, anyway, they have Red Ice Radio and Radio 314. Um, the main guy does Red Ice Radio and his girl named Lana does Radio 314. They're both very good. I both like them a lot. Um, they both have taken a kind of a well, a turn I didn't see coming a while back. They they started talking a lot about white pride and culture, and I don't mind that at all. I think that that is something that really should be addressed because it's been demonized in the past, which is something they were pointing out. But um, it kind of feels that it's almost becoming a reaction instead of a well thought out, you know, this is the kind of culture we should be pushing. It's a backlash revert to this closed off group of people. And that's a step back, I think that's a step back for all of humanity and understand the reasoning behind it, you know, the to keep a culture alive that's being killed off. I understand that think that culture is being killed off. In a lot of ways, it is. But, I mean, the way they're, they're, it seems they're going about it, it, it's going to turn, it seems like it's turning into the exact same thing they're fighting against. It's just the opposite. And that kind of sucks. You know, I'm, I'm definitely have no white guilt. I definitely have no problem with people that you know, they want to hang out with people of their own races and culture. Growing up, I went to a public high school, as many of you did, I'm sure, in America. And I saw very plainly, firsthand, very openly, how different cultures, they all split up into groups. And then they split up into subgroups, you know, the different types of people within, you know, the white culture, the black culture, you know, the Mexican culture in this area, they would split up into smaller groups of, you know, friends inside of these groups. But it's really weird, you know, you walk into the cafeteria and it was almost split in half, you know, all the black people were on the left side, all the white people on the right, and they didn't hate each other. That's not what it was about, you know, a lot of them got along with each other. They would talk and hang out in class and stuff like that. But they, they considered people that they looked more like them, more of their friends. And hey, I think that is, that's perfectly natural, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But to kind of force people to divide, I mean, that's just, not that they're trying to do that. They never said anything about trying to force people to separate. But they're encouraging people to, to, well, I think it's a good thing to encourage people to explore their own nationality and history, 
think that's a good thing, which is something they're doing. I think a lot of good stuff they're doing. I agree with a lot of stuff they say, but it seems like they're just kind of going a little bit further. They're, they're pushing it into a separatist movement. And that is kind of dangerous. You know, that's the... That's what creates the supremacy groups, you know. And I'm not saying it because they're white or, you know, a white supremacy group. But there are white supremacist groups out there, just as there are black supremacist groups and Mexican supremacist groups and, you know, Puerto Ricans, whatever. Every racial group out there has their own supremacy group. And we need, we don't need more of that. We need less of that. Because that kind of thing just doesn't matter. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read these quotes before I completely get off track here. These are from Terrence McKenna. Three different ones. Uh, first one, culture is a perverse... I'll restart that. Okay, culture is a perversion. It fetishizes objects, creates consumer mania. It preaches endless forms of false happiness, endless forms of false understanding in the form of squirrely religious religions and silly cults. It invites people to diminish themselves and dehumanize themselves by becoming like machines. I agree with that. Okay, second quote. Culture is not your friend. Culture is for other people's convenience and the convenience of various institutions, churches, companies, tax collection schemes, what have you. It's not your friend. It insults you. It disempowers you. It uses and abuses you. None of us are well treated by culture. And uh, the final quote, also from Terrence McKenna, if you weren't paying attention, chaos is what we've lost touch with. This is why it is given a bad name. It is feared by the dominant archetypes of our society, excuse me, of our world, which is ego, which clinches because its existence is defined in terms of control. Okay, final quote there. Um, and I think that that speaks directly to this thing it's um it's stagnant culture you know let's let's protect the culture we already have without expanding it and it completely the idea like that it completely does away with any sort of collaboration that's happened the combinations of cultures that have turned out really freaking well Think where music would be if it wasn't for cultures coming together the way they have. You know, they had um, black slaves were kind of making fun of and trying to sound like um, certain white musicians back in the day. And also added in some little um, African bits that sounds kind of weird but uh, stuff African influences musically and that created really the first blues sound which was then emulated again by white people you know years and years ago which is kind of bizarre you got one group emulating another and then that group starts emulating the other people emulating them and it it creates something completely different as far as sound goes. And if it wasn't for the mixing of cultures there, and you know, believe me, there are probably a lot of people who doesn't want cultures to mix like that. It, uh, I mean, it's amazing. It created something that was better than anything existed before right? in my opinion and I know in my opinion doesn't really mean crap to a lot of people that's fine I mean it's just an opinion but um, it, it was glorious you know and a whole bunch of stuff like that I mean think of all the you know the art that was created as far as civilizations go none of them would have gotten very far without trading and working with other ones I know, I know that um, some civilizations have thrown cultures back you know like uh when the library at alexandria was wiped out that set all of human all all of humanity back in the past 
You know, that's a terrible, terrible thing. And I, I'm not saying that all people should blend together, all cultures should blend together into one, making a bland blahness, just a terrible, terrible situation. I remember there's a uh, there's an article that came out, not an article. Um, it was a rendition of what people were supposed to look like in the future from a, a big magazine. It might have been Newsweek. I don't remember. It was a, a while ago. And it was a mock-up of people that were all blended together. And the, the captioning, it was talking about how beautiful these people were, of how you know the unique the future looks. And I looked at it, and it looked just terrible. I mean, everybody looked exactly the same. They all... You know, they had very boringish eyes. They all looked, you know, the same skin color and hair. And I think that that is bullshit. That is not how the future is going to be. That's not how people are going to blend. That's, I mean, people are going to blend. It's going to happen. And I think that's a good thing. But it would be terrible if everybody blended into, like, oblivion. If all people look the same, think of how boring the world would look. If all cultures were the same everywhere in the world, there would be no reason to travel. But that's just not going to happen. That's a fear. But it's an irrational fear. And if you sit down and think about it, the closest anything could come like that would be under like some sort of dictatorship. And that's not going to happen. You know, not... Globally, people are trying. They've always tried. But even if if a world government took over tomorrow, they couldn't force everybody to be the same. Even if they tried, it would be completely impossible. And nobody wants to take all the races, all the the cultural groups, and blend them into a boring blah mess. Nobody wants that. And I just don't see it happening, even if people try to do it. And I think it's just an irrational fear. You know, something that people shouldn't worry about. And people are taking it in the wrong direction. Okay. Now, I was talking about a film review. On this, um, on, on the podcast they've been doing on Red Ice Radio and 314 lately, they've been mentioning a new documentary. It's a historical World War II documentary titled um, Hitler, The Greatest Story Never Told. And it's pretty much World War II told from the Axis point of view. And as far as a documentary film goes, if you enjoy history documentaries and stuff, you should check it out. You'll really like it. It's got some very, very interesting stuff in it. But it's got little bits and tidbits in there that... uh, I and mean, they're just ridiculous statements. Like there's a there's a statement early on in the documentary, so I'm not giving anything away here. Where um, they're talking about how how awesome Germany was before World War II started. So um, after Hitler took over and started cleaning up the, the cities and everything, um, how great it was. And they accept they made the statement. You know, it was almost perfect if it wasn't for this police state. And, I mean, they they would talk about the police state that was going on at the time like like it was nothing. Like it was, um, like it was perfectly fine. And they tried to glaze over it. Because all of these little things that that you know that uh, the Nazis did, it was just kind of glazed over or the argument to kind of disprove it didn't seem full it seemed um it seemed like it was just a little piece of an argument that doesn't really satisfy all the answers so i don't think this is um you know it should be taken completely at faith i think definitely look into the history But a lot of the stuff that they talked about, like the bad stuff that, you know, the uh, Western powers did during World War II was very accurate. And not nearly as shocking 
if you know anything about the bat, the war between Germany and Russia, if you've ever heard um, or, or read anything about the Eastern Front, you know the the battle or the the war mainly between the Russians and the Germans during World War II. You know how horrible. It and a lot of the stuff they would talk about during the war, during that time period, is terrible stuff. And it's a lot of stuff that a lot of Ameri Americans don't know. But, um, you know, it might be shocking to you, but it, it didn't blow my mind because it's something I've definitely heard before. But it's something that a lot of people haven't, and I'm glad it's out there in a documentary form. Uh, there's a really cool podcast on it that that Dan Carlin did in a his hardcore history podcast. You should check it out. It was uh, it was called Ghost of Something. Really good multi-part series. It's probably as long as the documentary series, which is like six and a half hours long. Um, the most interesting stuff about the documentary series though happens after the war ends. Them talking about what was done to the German people. I found that fascinating. Like that's something I never heard about. And when they're talking about the uh, the um, the concentration camps, there was some interesting stuff in there. They were talking about how they, a lot of the uh, American forces that came by there forced the German town people to come in and view the concentration camps, all the dead bodies in there which they said died from diseases. And I, I don't think that many people would die of diseases. The shaving head things for lice, that makes sense. Um, but, I mean, a lot of people that died from those diseases, I mean, I'm sure there were some. And they're trying to say there was no proof of any gassing or anything. And you know, maybe, I don't know. Like, I don't really understand too much about the uh, the concentration part of World War II. I've never looked into that too much, but it seemed that some of the stuff in the documentary here was glazed over, like uh, I don't know. I know that um, they're correct when they start talking about all the people that got prosecuted and discriminated against from asking questions about World War II and what was going on there. And I know that the Allies made up a whole bunch of stuff about the, the Germans to make them look worse than they were. And, you know, the Americans and the British especially, they did stuff just as bad as the Germans did. I mean, I, I get that. I knew that before going in. And I don't know. It didn't make me a Axis supporter for World War II. It kind of made me feel like well, I mean, the people on both sides were manipulated, and you really shouldn't support any side during a war. I mean, you should never support a government. The only people, I think, during World War II that were doing like they should were the people just guarding their houses and homes and stuff, and nobody talks about those people. Nobody talks about the people that just tried to survive. The people that tried to get away from the war There was a, a cool movie that, I think it had Daniel Craig in it a couple years ago that came out about these Jewish people that hit out away from Germans in Germany, I think it was in Germany, and fought against Nazis. That was pretty cool. I mean, I don't know if that how historically accurate that is, but um, I'm sure it happened. You know, I'm sure people actually stood up and fought back against the, you know, the Russians and the Germans and the British. One thing I thought was really awesome in the, in the documentary was um, when they were talking about how the, a lot of the Russians saw the uh, the German army and the the SS as um, as heroes for liberating them from communism. Now that's probably way accurate. I mean, it was terrible living in Russia at that time, and. They had interviews. They had some, a lot of footage I've never seen before. They had interviews with people from Russia that went with the Germans and was talking about how, you know, 
glad they were that they were allowed to retreat with the Germans. Or uh, when they're interviewing British soldiers about some of the atrocities that they did during the war, and they would, you know, they would make jokes about it. Or the Russian ask them a, a specific direct question, like, um, when people raped these German women, did they talk about it? And you're like, oh yeah, they, they bragged about it. They, uh, whenever they slept with these women, and that's what they would say, they would say slept with. They wouldn't say rape, they wouldn't say, you know, attacked and molested or tortured or anything. They wouldn't say, they wouldn't even say like fucked, you know, um, more verbally. They, they would say, when, when they sleep with these women, like it was like a consensual act. And that is horrifying. Horrifying. Now, I think the documentary does a really good job at showing that the Allies were just as nasty and just as bad as the Axis powers. But I think a lot of people that act like the documentary kind of rectifies the um, Axis as being like the good side during the war, I think that that is completely baloney. I mean, it doesn't really show that to me. Um, at times it seems like it tries, like you can tell it's obviously biased, but I mean you can tell it's biased and that keeps it from being um, I guess I'd say taken completely serious, but I, I don't mean it like that because it can still be taken serious, but you you realize that it's not like the only account that you should look at. But um, I don't think that's a problem necessarily, since there's plenty of propaganda you know, pushing the other way. So if you watch this documentary, which I'm saying you should do, I think you should check out this documentary, especially if you like historical documentaries, especially World War II ones, if you're like an old school History Channel fan and watch a whole bunch of those, you should definitely check this out. It's uh, like 26, 27 parts, you can find them all on the internet, you can stream them. It's, it's interesting. I watched the whole thing over like two days. Yeah, I recommend it. I recommend those um, two podcasts. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe you disagree with me about the um, them going a little too far with the, the thing, but I know... I listened to a podcast the other day, or half of it, I haven't finished it, and Lana, it was a Radio 314 podcast, and Lana's talking to this guy that wrote a book about men, I forget their name, but she, uh, she actually quotes Hitler, and I thought it was really distasteful, not because um, of the quote she used, but it seems like she's trying to use stuff from somebody because she, she now feels it's like he's been rectified. But, I mean, he was a statist like beyond all belief. Hitler was a terrible, terrible statist, no matter how you look at him. Even if you think that, um, you know, he did a lot of good stuff for the German people as far as um, helping them out culturally and putting them right back on track. But he was a statist. Like, he, he took over this area and he closed down, um, was it Berlin, right? He closed down all these, you know, Jewish gay clubs and stuff like that because of who owned them, because he didn't like it. And they're talking about that like it's okay. You know, she didn't say that, but in the documentary it does. And to, to quote him kind of leads credence to some of these ideas. Like it's okay to close down stuff you don't like if it's unnatural for your culture. So he got rid of all the uh, the porn shops and stuff in Berlin because it's against his culture. But, um, you know, white people, they had porn just as long as everybody else has. And if you don't want porn, fine, you know, but exile people for it, you know, from, from where they live. It's Puritanism. That's all it is. It's just another form of Puritanism, which, you know, is a part of Western culture. 
but it's not a proud part of Western culture. And I mean, I'm not saying anybody should go out there and and blend for the sake of blending in with everybody. You shouldn't do that, but you shouldn't separate for the sake of separating with everybody either. I mean, just for the hell of it. Don't force yourself to be separate from all of humanity because you are a certain color. You know, you I have some very good friends that are white. Most of my friends are, because I guess because I'm white. But I have a lot of very good friends that are not, you know, that are various races from all over the place. And that's awesome. I mean, they're different. They're all different people. They all have different experiences. And they are a blast to talk to. You learn so much talking to people of different cultures. And it'd be a shame for people to miss that. That's all I'm saying. Explore. The point of existence, I think, is just to experience. So experience as much as possible. Think about it. Thanks for listening, guys. Listening, guys. Hitler was a fucking tyrant, even if he was only as bad as the rest of them. That's, you know, that's a fact. Because the rest of them were tyrants, too. Churchill's a tyrant. Woodrow Wilson's a tyrant. For real. They're all tyrants. All quote-unquote world leaders. Including Hitler. Not especially Hitler. They're all just as bad. So yeah, that's just my point of view. Racism and statism are just bullshit. They're both just illusions. There may be some differences between different ethnicities as far as, you know, maybe some people are better at certain things than others genetically. And that's definitely a possibility. I mean, there's, when you look at dogs and look at like plants, they don't all do the same thing. That doesn't mean that one specific species is better than another. If you know what I mean. I guess they're all the same species, but you get what I'm saying. One specific animal that has been bred to do one thing because it's you know naturally better at doing that particular thing is not particularly better than another animal who has been bred or another specific thing. And I'm not saying people are animals and are being bred for specific things, but you gotta think that naturally people may just be predisposed to be better at certain things than other and that could be a very good thing for all of humanity if we all work together, not as you know, not separating each other because oh I'm I'm white or I'm I'm black, I can't associate with you. I mean that's bullshit. Um, like I'm white and I can I can listen to old blues records because they're fucking awesome. It doesn't matter that it was made by, you know, mostly black people back then. And I'm not stealing that from anybody. And I don't think it makes my culture any worse to listen to, you know, Robert Johnson or something. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, thanks for listening, guys.